Is there a difference with respect to the source of protein supplements? So, for example, if it's sourced from casein versus whey versus egg white protein with respect to we're talking about skeletal muscle protein synthesis and presumably increases in muscle mass. Yep. So this is stuff that we, the, the whole intrinsically labeled cow, so the cow infusion, getting intrinsically labeled milk, and we extracted whey and casein in order to, to show the, di, the digestion and absorption kinetics and also the capacity to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Now, we've done these studies years ago, and that shows that micellar casein is a slowly digestible protein, so the increase in circulating essential amino acids in the blood is more sluggish than when you ingest whey protein, which is a more rapidly digestible protein. And so uh, the whey protein gets uh, or is more rapidly digested, greater increases in muscle protein synthesis, and also uh, has a greater anabolic response, uh, greater increase in muscle protein synthesis. Now, we thought that's maybe only because of the more rapid digestion and absorption, so we hydrolyzed the casein, make it more rapidly digestible, so it was just as easily digested and absorbed as the whey, but it still had a lesser response. So that might be due to the lesser amount of leucine in casein than in whey. Whey has a higher leucine content, and we know that leucine is, a, is, an, uh, is, a, is, a, is, a, is an amino acid that has very strong signaling properties, so it stimulates the mTOR pathway, and therefore it sets off the whole anabolic cascade. And... We also double-checked that by adding free leucine on the casein, and we got a greater response. So in short, we know that the anabolic potential of a protein is related to the rate of digestion and absorption and the amount of, um, at least, the amount of leucine in combination with other amino acids. And that's the whole basis of why whey is more popular with athletes than uh, casein. But the differences are very small. And so for practice in combination with diets and throughout the whole day, all the food that you eat, it's very minimal. But of course, I mean, I ride a bike that is only nine kilos, uh, but I might have actually 15 kilograms of overweight. So I could actually do with a much heavier bike, but I still want the fastest bike and the lightest bike. And so people want the best supplement. Does it make that much of a difference? I don't think so that much. Sitting upright while you eat or actually chewing well has also a huge effect on the rate of digestion and absorption. So, but these differences exist, but these the differences are very small if you compare milk, uh, whey, or egg protein. Oh, egg white as well. Egg, egg is also great, great from a from a from a, a amino acid composition and also digestion and absorption. It's great. Um, I want to kind of shift back and talk about the the protein source because we've talked about the animal source. We've talked about supplemental sources of protein from animal products. Yep. But there's also a large percentage of people that are vegetarian and vegan who don't consume any animal products. Yep. So maybe you can tell people a little bit about the differences between food sources, um, plant sources of protein versus animal sources of protein. So first, and then again, I have to make the difference between whole foods, protein isolates, and protein concentrates. So if you want to consume Protein through plant-based foods, so beans, uh, lettuce, uh, nuts, whatever, is it's more difficult to get a certain amount of protein in. If you want to ingest 20 grams of protein through eating meat, 70 grams of, of meat. If you want to get 20 grams of protein in by eating potatoes, you have to eat more than a kilogram of potatoes. So first of all, it's just more difficult to get the same amount of protein in if you actually consume it as whole foods. And then when you consu consume it at whole foods, most plant-based foods have anti-nutritional factors. So the capacity for you to extract that protein through your body is less. So the digestibility is lower. Those are the two issues when you, when you have uh, plant-based foods. Now, nowadays, uh, and much of the research has looked at the proteins that are actually in plant-based foods extracted those proteins, and then assessed their capacity to stimulate muscle protein synthesis. Has been done for uh, some proteins like uh, wheat protein, soy protein a lot, pea protein, uh, about five different proteins that, that uh, we and others have actually assessed. And then some of them actually, some of these studies show a lesser capacity to stimulate muscle protein synthesis when compared to an equivalent amount of mostly dairy protein. 
That might be attributed to the fact that there's less leucine, less essential amino acids, and sometimes most of the plant-based proteins are deficient in one or more specific amino acids. And that's often methionine and lysine. Um, the last five years, we have been trying the protein extracts from uh, pea and gluten and corn. And actually, if we give in healthy subjects, we give 30 grams, which is quite a lot of protein. We don't see a difference with, with dairy protein. So if you give sufficient of the protein, of the protein extract, where digestibility is high, there's not much that much difference in uh, muscle protein synthesis. However, if you would take it from a plant-based food, then on a certain equivalent amount of protein, less of that protein becomes available. And that is, of course, then you have to compensate for that a little bit. So vegans that um, are interested in gaining muscle mass, obviously preserving muscle mass, but also gaining muscle mass with their resistance training programs, they can supplement with protein, plant-based protein powder sources that will allow them to, on a gram per gram basis, especially if it's a high enough dose, gain the same muscle mass as someone doing, let's say, animal-based protein supplements, um, potentially. I, th I think so. So uh, not they don't necessarily have to uh, supplements. Supplements is probably easier. They can also compensate for lesser quality by greater uh, quantity, but then you have to consume a huge amount of food. And of course, you improve the quality of your protein sources by having a very diverse palette of uh, plant-based foods. So if you really know what you're doing from a nutrition perspective, dietetics perspective, then I think it's quite cap you're, you're quite capable doing that on a vegan diet, but it's more difficult. And of course, if you start using plant-based uh, protein isolates or plant-derived proteins, I should say, it gets easier. And it, what about, so you mentioned pea protein is what you looked at in your study and compared it to dairy when 30 grams and 30 grams, there was no difference in terms yep. of skeletal muscle protein synthesis. What about, so is is pea protein different from rice protein in terms of its amino acid composition? Is there a protein powder that's better perhaps for vegans that are interested in increasing their, their muscle mass? So so uh, we, 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 we basically years ago, we looked at all the commercially available protein extracts, so protein, uh, plant-derived plant proteins. And then you see that some of them are actually low in leucine, but some, just as corn, is actually higher in leucine than most animal-derived proteins. So not all plant-based proteins are the same. Duh. Um, the deficiencies in lysine and methionine is also one protein can be very deficient in methionine. The other one is actually deficient in lysine, but not in methionine. So there's not one specific protein that I would say that one is the best. But you can, you can uh, mix up and blend different plant-based uh, proteins that actually together have a very nice, nice protein balanced amino acid profile. So combinations are great. What we expected from our studies with the individual proteins that they would actually show a lesser response and that by adding some milk protein, we would actually compensate for that. But in all those proteins, like the pea protein, we actually did not find a lesser muscle protein synthetic response. But I do need to note that we did that with 30 grams of a protein extract, so you don't have the digestibility issue. What would be... so? You, you mentioned lysine and methionine. Maybe you can explain to people why those are also important. You mentioned leucine and how that stimulates mTOR, and that's important for muscle protein synthesis. But um, what, why is lysine and methionine important? And then maybe also why would uh, what would be a good combination of plant source protein powders perhaps to get all those? Like you said, pea protein, is there something else in combination with pea that would cover all the bases? Yeah, so one of the things, I mean... Um, some amino acids may have stronger signaling properties, but of course, if you're trying to build a protein, you need all the building blocks, all the different building blocks, and that includes methionine and lysine, of course. So you need sufficient of all the amino acids. Now, you can actually take blends with, and we used a blend with three different plant-based proteins, and that worked fine. Uh, but you also see that some combinations, for example, one's low, low in methionine and the other one uh, low in lysine, they actually make, make nice blends. And funny enough, if you start looking at those proteins, then you suddenly realize that all over the world, people are consuming meals that actually have proteins that are very nicely compository or matching. 
And so when I saw those data the first time, I suddenly realized why a fajita actually has beans in it. So the wheat and the beans is actually a nice complementary amino acid, amino acid mix. So it's really funny if you see that. Somewhere people have actually noticed that or experienced that. And then sprouting, I think also some of the, you can get sprouted quinoa source of protein where it's getting away some of the, um, as, as you mentioned, like some of these anti-nutritional components, like the fiber matrix that are, you know, in some cases, other uh, lectins and yeah. um, they're, they're sort of inhibiting some of the absorption of protein. What about ice, protein isolate versus concentrate? Which one is, is it better to consume protein isolate for a higher protein? I would prefer the product where the protein actually is in, so not even the isolate or the concentrate. But then if you're using a supplement and you want to take the pure protein, then you can take the isolate or the concentrate. Concentrate. The isolate is only the protein. The concentrate is basically, yeah, the concentrated protein, so it still has other stuff. Like for milk protein concentrate, it still has lactose in it and still has some uh, some some other stuff, some fat in there. Um so yeah, is one better than the other? No, it depends on what you're what you're aiming for, what your the nutri- nutrient targets are, basically. Yeah, if if someone's interested in lower fat content and more protein content. Yeah, then you would go for an isolate, of course. Protein isolate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 